So I've been on this flight to New York City for the last nine or ten hours or so. And I'm here to attend an event by DJI. It's very exciting. Let's see what it is. So I made it to New York City and I'm right in front of Times Square Studios. This is where the DJI event is taking place. Let's just walk right in. Please meet the new DJI Osmo Pocket. I'm here with Andre Becker from DJI. He just came from stage introducing the new Osmo Pocket. So what is this and how long have you been working on it? Pooh, I guess we started over one and a half years ago. It took us a long time. Um, the Osmo was already really successful and we thought, how can we make this device more successful? And we, we th said, said for the second generation, it has to be ultra portable because limited space if you are going on vacation traveling or shooting especially when it comes to your pocket you have only limited space so what you take with you is always a choice and we wanted to build something which is always with you and which is ready to shoot and still provides a really nice picture and this is the Osmo pocket so basically it's a device for not only the epic moments but really the everyday life and that's the reason you can take it with your pocket, you get it out, it's ready to shoot in under five seconds, and then you point the camera and our gimbal does the rest. And usually, uh, that was also the original idea. When I'm going on vacation, I, as a filmmaker, I always take stuff with me, camera, tripod, motorized hat. But with that, if it fits in your pocket, you can take it every time. I mean, what strikes me the second I had it in my hand is that it's extremely smooth. So can you run me through the main features? I mean, this obviously is made for filming and photography, but you also have time-lapse and stuff like that. Yes, so when it comes to the specs, um, inside the gimbal, we have a one over 2.3 ca uh, inch camera sensor, 4K video, up to 60 frames per second, and 100 Mbit recording, H.264. Stills are captured in 12 megapixels, JPEG or RAW, and then you can shoot photos, videos, time-lapse, then motion-lapse, just say start, stop, you also demonstrated a lot of uh, night functionality, which is something that's always difficult for small sensors. So how do you deal with this? How is it possible that you can get exposure during quite dark scenes with such a small sensor? If you want to shoot pictures in dark and you have only a smartphone or a camera with a small sensor, you have to increase the ISO to get the shutter speed, like really fast. And that generates noises. And luckily we have that gimbal. And if we have a low light situation, the, the Osmo Pocket sees that and then the gimbal is extra steady and you can really point and you can move a little bit and the gimbal keeps the shot steady and you still get great shots in the dark. So this is basically made to be used on its own but you can also attach your smartphone and then you access more functionality or? Yes, when you just use it out of your pocket everything is set to, uh, to automatic except uh, frame rate and re resolution. And then if you attach your smartphone we created a new app called Mimo, and from there you can go into pro mode. Here's where it gets interesting for the pros. You have then the possibility to change exposure totally manual, lock the exposure, and especially then if you combine it with ND filters, you want to do motion labs um, or light paintings, then you have full control. Very cool. Face tracking. Everything is stored inside the device, or are you storing on the phone? Um, you have a micro SD card, mm -hmm. uh, which takes all the photos and videos, uh, but you can transfer them directly to your smartphone. And when you attach the phone, is it still recording in the device, or can you also record on the phone? You can, if you don't have a, everything is on the micro SD mm -hmm. card. If you don't have a micro SD card, then the video can still be captured in the camera roll, and we'll see what we can add later. So it's a little bit like with the drones, right? Like you have a kind of proxy inside the phone, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Cool. Um, accessories, you mentioned the ND filters. Uh, there's a whole range of accessories that you guys also announced with the device. Um, how do the ND filters work to start off with? ND filters? 
come in a nice little case. And we're bringing four defilters, 4, 8, 16 and uh, 32. And you just get them out and then they clip on via magnets and that's it. Cool. You guys also introduced an action uh, camera uh, holder, right? So you can attach it to standard mounts like the stuff that comes with GoPros. Yeah, this accessory mount is universal and with that you can mount it everywhere, put it on a tripod if you need a large tripod. Then you have the wireless module which provides a greater stand. Cool. Built-in battery, right? You can't exchange it. So how long is the battery life? Battery life is around two hours mm -hmm. and then you can attach USB Type-C uh, which charges up the device. Which brings me to, this is actually my favorite accessory, it stores your ND filters. So when I take the ND filter off, um, you also have magnets in here, so I can just put them in and they don't fall out. Mm -hmm. They also carry all of the phone connectors, some additional micro SD cards, and when you put the device in it, it's in power bank. So the case itself charges up the Osmo Pocket up to like back to 100%. One last question before we wrap it up. Pricing and availability. It's $349. The euro prices you will find uh, later <laughs> in your review because I currently don't know the euro prices. Um, you can order it right now. Um, it's available with the DJI online store, um, the flagship stores and the authorized dealers. And we start shipping on December 15th. Cool. Thank you, Andre. I've been back in Vienna for a couple of days and after playing with this a lot more, I can give you now my impressions as a professional filmmaker. But you will say this is not a professional device, it's for consumers. And you're right. But Cinema 5D has always been about making inexpensive tools make work for professional filmmaking. Now this is not gonna be a full review. There are loads of full reviews of the Osmo Pocket out there already. I'm only gonna talk about the aspects that are relevant for pro filmmakers. DJI has created a completely new category with this device. It's really, really small and it fits in your pocket which is not true for every product that bears the name Pocket in its name. Now with all the advanced camera technology that DJI has been developing for their drones for the past couple of years, I was expecting them to put them into a different kind of form factor at some point. And this has happened with the Osmo Pocket. Now, of course, a lot of people on the internet compare this to an action camera like the GoPro Hero 7. But I think this is a completely different category of a device. The one thing that this will definitely replace, in my opinion, is the smartphone gimbal. Gimbals that were made to be used with smartphones. This is smaller, uh, it's more pocketable, as I already mentioned, and it's definitely giving you better quality and more dedicated functions. Now, the gimbal in the Osmo Pocket is very impressive. It works very well even when running. This is clearly something they've learned very well over the past few years when designing the Ronin gimbals. The sensor that's used in here is a one of a 2.3 inch sensor, the same as in the Mavic 2 Zoom. And uh, we have a fixed f2.0 uh, aperture and a field of view of an equivalent of around 28 millimeters. So this is not very wide. It's kind of a good focal length to be used um, to film some uh, vlogging, to film yourself and also some walk and talk shots while following somebody and filming them while they are talking. So I personally like that it's not as wide as a typical action camera shot. The built-in screen gives you access to a lot of the functions. You can swap between video, uh, photo, panoramic mode, time-lapse and all kinds of stuff. But you do not have access to the pro functions. But to be honest, as a professional, it is hard to use this monitor anyway because it's almost impossible to judge focus. I've done a couple of shots with the device alone, without the app, without the preview through the phone, where I thought I was in focus, but I really clearly wasn't. But as I mentioned, you need to use the MIMO app by DJI anyway, if you want to access the pro functions of the device. After activating the pro mode in the app, you can access ISO, shutter speed, white balance, all kinds of things. And it's actually quite impressive that you can control all of this through the app. That really makes it much more feasible as a professional device. What's really nice are all the different frame rates you can record with this device. There's 24p, there's 25p, there's 30p, there's even 60p in up to UHD 4K. And that is something not even the Mavic 2 Pro can do. However, when you record 4K, 
4K 60p, you only have around 100 megabits per second uh, of data rate, which is not very high. And when you record in any other of the UHD 4K modes, like 25p or 30p, it's around 80 megabits per second on average. That's not great, but it's still good enough for a lot of stuff. When you drop down to HD, it's only around 30 megabits and that's clearly not good enough for professional work. But that's what you have to live with as soon as you switch to slow motion, which is 120 frames per second. What's unfortunately still missing at the time of the recording of this video in the Mimo app are picture profile settings. So far, there is no D-Log or D-Cine style, but according to Andre from DJI, this will come soon as a free update. Now let's talk about audio on the Osmo Pocket. It has two microphones built in and some noise reduction. The audio is okay on this device, but it's not really great. So that might be a problem for vloggers. I really recommend an external microphone for that. To use an external microphone, you will need an accessory though. And there is a 3.5 millimeter accessory to allow you to do just that. Um, you cannot change the um, audio levels, however, and there's also no way to actually monitor audio because it doesn't have a headphone jack. To summarize, for professionals, I think this device is small enough to always have in your kit bag as a B or C camera. And it's also cheap enough at $350 to be close to a no-brainer just to have on you at all times. It's not really perfect at anything, but it's really good at many things. And that makes it very, very interesting to just give to a producer, director or assistant when you are on a shoot to get that extra angle that you might be otherwise missing. For consumers, I think the price of $350 might be a little bit steep, especially if they already own a very good smartphone camera that they always have on them anyway. If it was $150 cheaper, I think it would find a much bigger market with consumers. For vloggers or Instagrammers, this might be the perfect device to always keep with them and to be spontaneous enough to record themselves talking to the camera. But they should just think about using a separate microphone solution. But the Osmo Pocket is clearly a sign of things to come and I cannot wait to see what's next. I'm sure that DJI secretly works on the pro version of this in the background and I'm very curious to review that once it's out. Thanks for watching, this is Cinema 5D, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon if you want to be notified about any of our new uploads. Thanks.